Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Living Waters Community Church. I would like to welcome all of you on behalf of Living Waters. We know that you could have gone and done anything you wanted to do this morning, but you made a conscious effort to come out and worship with us this morning. And for that, you will be blessed. Let's stand for a word of prayer, please. Most gracious and honorable Heavenly Father, Father God, we'd like to thank you first and foremost for being God all by yourself. Father God, you are capable of doing anything but failing your children, Father God. And so today we just ask that you rest, rule, and abide in this service. And we will be so careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. And it is in your son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And since we're already standing, let's give it a praise and worship. Amen. Okay. Stay along with us. Thank you. 
amazing news of the gospel is not that we can receive Jesus into our lives, but that he's already received us into his. In my own life, it means forgiveness when I know I deserve the fall. Our love is the secret that I 
a heart of Jesus for your people. It's not an easy job being a pastor. And yet you call the faithful few. And you speak into their lives. And you build them up, Father God for an office such as pastor. Father God, I thank you for my pastor. I thank you for the man of God that you have made him. I thank you for him seeking you in everything so that he can be on your path of righteousness at all times. Yes, Father, he's here. That's how you created him. But Father God, let him find himself in a constant state of repentance. So that before you, Father God, he can remain holy. So you can continue to pour into him your unchanging word. And so that he can deliver it exactly the way you said for him to deliver it. Now, Father God, once he delivers this word, let it hit its target, Father God. Because transformation is necessary in your children. Oh, Father God, we don't always believe. But let your word stand and show, Father God. That regardless of how we feel, your word is true. And it will save us, Father God, from our very selves. So, Father God, please, please hold Pastor Vance's heart in your hand as he rightly devised the word of truth this morning. And we will be so careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. And it's in the majestic name of Jesus that we pray. And living waters said, amen, amen, and amen. You may be seated. Glad you came today. Yes. God knows I am. Amen. For sure. Let's go ahead and give God a hand clap of praise this morning. My God. My God, my God, my God. My God. Oh. Well, y'all know we've been talking about the spiritual disciplines. And today we're going to embark upon the spiritual discipline of Bible study. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, I need to read my word. I need to read my word. When it comes to studying God's word, this is one of the most important disciplines that we practice. We have to allow it to become a pillar in our life of faith. Amen. We are commanded to study God's word, and it should be with enthusiasm, with zeal. His word is the very thing that transforms our hearts, our lives, and teaches us how to navigate life's issues. Living in scripture is everything, y'all. A life built on studying God's word is a life that is devoted to God. Amen. A Christian must have a consistent daily time of Bible study. Yes. Scripture is the key foundation for us understanding how we are to be followers of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Christian life begins with faith. Faith should result in growth. And growth brings practical truth. The only way one is going to experience spiritual growth is if one feeds upon the word of God. The word is inspired by the holy God that is pure. He can download it straight to you. 1 Peter 2 and 2 tells us 
to long for pure spiritual milk. In other words, to long for the word of God. Pure means undiluted, untainted. A lot of us want the word, but we want to mix it with other information. Are y'all hearing me today? Yes. It's like going to a county or a state fair. And you come across a vendor. Hey, brother, how you doing? Good to see you. You come across a vendor selling candy apples. Right? Candy apples are apples dipped in sugar. Now, apples by themselves is a good, healthy fruit. Okay. Once you dip them in sugar, you've just killed the health benefit Amen. of the apple. Even though it may taste good, the candy apple is sweet, but the nutritional value is now diluted because something with no value has been added to it. Many people, many of us, many of us will read the word of God. We'll hear the word of God. Talk to other people about the word of God. But then we dip it in human viewpoint. Mm. That's good. That's really good. This is why we need to study the word of God for ourselves and allow it to speak to where we at. Yes. The big idea this morning is this. Get it from God for yourself. Amen. Very good. Get it from God for yourself. Our text today is going to be 1 Peter. 2 Peter, I'm sorry, chapter 1, verses 12 to 21, and 2 Timothy 3, 14 through 17. 1 Peter 1, 12 to 21, this passage is going to have us look at and show us the power of Scripture and give us three things of what not to do when it comes to Scripture. So 1 Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1, chapter 1, verse 12 to 21. <clears throat> And this is the word of the Lord. Therefore, I intended always to remind you of these qualities. Though you know them and are established in the truth that you have, I think you're right as long as I am in this body to stir you up by way of reminder, since I know that the putting off of my body will be soon. As our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me, and I will make every effort so that after my departure, you may be able at any time to recall these things. Verse 16. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we were made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was born to him by the majestic glory. This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Amen. We ourselves heard this very voice born from heaven. For we were with him on the holy mountain. And we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed, to which you will do well to pay attention to a, as a lamp shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. Oh, somebody say Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Knowing this first of all, that no prophecy or scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. Mm -hmm. yes. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God. We ask that you just take refuge in this place today, God. Arrest our spirits and summon our souls, God. That our hearts may be open and our minds may be clear to receive what it is that you have for us, Lord. Let your word, oh God, be something of sustenance, God. Something we can meditate on, Father God, and eat off of, Lord. Father, now decrease in me, God, and increase in you. So a transformation of the heart can take place. We surrender it all to you, God. Now have your way, Lord. Father, we thank you right now. We give you glory right now. We magnify you right now, God, for what you're about to do. In the wonderful and the majestic name of Jesus, in the church, say amen. 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 Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap of praise to you. 
verses 12 through 15 says, therefore, I intended always to remind you of these qualities, though you know them and are established in truth that you have. I think you're right as long as I'm in this body to stir you up by way of reminder since I know that the putting off of my body will be soon as our Lord Jesus Christ made clear to me and I will make every effort so that after my departure you may be able at any time to recall these things. The first thing I was able to glean out of this text is this. Don't stop studying scripture. Don't stop studying scripture. As we mature, we have the proclivity to think that we have it all figured out. That we don't need to learn anything else. Not only do we have the propensity to think that about our occupation, our education, our relationships. We also have the propensity to think this about things concerning scripture. Some of y'all, some of us, some folk have read the Bible from cover to cover numerous times. Some have heard sermons and Sunday school lessons and Bible studies from a plethora of different preachers and numerous passages and texts. Some have spent many years in theological schools and studied the Old Testament in the Hebrew language and the New Testament in Greek. But as Peter tells us, we cannot stop studying God's word. Because the word of God helps us, watch this, keep biblical morality at the forefront of our mind. Mm. The Bible is the living word, y'all. Mm -hmm. The Bible is the living word of God. And the reason, the reason that scripture is referred to as the living word is that God opens up new things to us each time we study his word through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Scripture is our spiritual food. Yes. And regardless of how much you ate yesterday, last week, or last year, you need to eat today. couple of questions, and I don't want you to raise your hand or nothing like that. I just want you to ponder on How often do you study scripture? See, there's a difference between reading scripture and studying scripture. Amen. If you are a person that reads for quantity, you need to stop and consider the fact that the quality is more important. Do you allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you through your study. Are you applying scripture? Or are you just reading? The Bible says, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman or who's need not to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. We have a responsibility, y'all, to go to the Bible and study it. So we're able to communicate why we believe what we believe to those that don't believe. So that they may come to know Christ as Savior. If you're not in your word, how are you going to do that? It's important to our growth. Don't stop studying Scripture. The next thing I need you to see is this. Don't doubt Scripture. One of the main questions that a lost person struggles with is what proof do you have that the Bible is right? Throughout centuries, there have been many who have tried to destroy God's word, y'all. But they have not been successful. The Bible has been written by many different men who lived in different country, times, cultures, and yet each book, each chapter, each verse fit together with one another. Hmm. Because it's God inspired. Amen. Amen. It's God inspired Amen. word. It's not a word inspired by man. Right. Peter was saying, But we do not follow cleverly devised myths when we were made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. In other words, scripture is not a fairy tale, and the gospel of Christ is not a myth. Amen. And Peter and the others were witnesses to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Peter had observed his majesty firsthand, y'all. Amen. He looked forward to the return of Christ. 
Hallelujah. And he looked forward with surety, not with doubt. In this verse, he's referring to the transfiguration of Christ. He was sure that he's coming back. There are so many proofs of scripture that I don't have time to elaborate on in reference to the authenticity of scripture. But one of these are proofs are found in this text. Here, this proof of evidence or eyewitness account, obviously, you know, we were not living at that time. But an eyewitness account is always evidence. Don't allow Satan to convince you that scripture is outdated or irrelevant. It is applicable to our own lives regardless of what year we are living in. Amen. Verse 17 to 18, Peter talks about Jesus receiving honor and glory from God, pointing out God's display of declaration of divine sonship upon Jesus and how he heard the voice himself. Wow. He heard God say himself. He was an eyewitness to, to, to Matthew 3.17. This is my son with whom I'm well pleased. He was an eyewitness's account to this. Look, people of God, instead of allowing doubt to creep into our minds, set our hearts upon the word and study it to show ourselves approved by God. A workman that he not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And when you do it, do so with your maximum effort to understand God's truth as complete and with clarity and clarity as possible. John MacArthur said this. He said, give unreserved commitment to excellence in examining, interpreting, explaining, and applying God's word. Give every effort. Amen. Get you some commentary, some concordances, and crack open the Bible and study. Yes. And get an understanding of what God is saying to you where you're at. Amen. Mm. Don't doubt scripture. Amen. Don't stop studying scripture. Amen. And most importantly, don't forget who the author of scripture is. Amen. Don't forget who the author of scripture is. I got to tell y'all, this microphone is throwing me off. I'm not used to this. <laughs> I used to talk with my hands. <laughs> on our own, you know, we are walking around in the dark not knowing what to do. But God's word is light to our path. Amen. Amen. The Bible says his word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. Although each book had a right, the Holy Spirit is the actual author. Amen. And we need to remember that. Yes. Yes. Second Timothy 3, 14 through 17 tells us this. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is breathed out by God, profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training. And righteousness that a man of God may be complete and equipped for every good work. Amen. Every good work. Hallelujah. Every good work. Amen. Not some work. Right. Oh. Every good work. Yeah. Every good work. That's good. All scriptures are God breathed. God word guides us in living our lives as obedient children. Amen. The word of God is trustworthy. It is our rule of faith. It is infallible, inerrant, and absolute. It is infinite, and it sanctifies us in truth. It settles and stands firm, y'all. It accomplishes God's will and his desires for us. Amen. It increases our faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We gain salvation through the word of God, which lives and abides forever in us. Hallelujah. It sanctifies and examines every aspect of our hearts and discerns our motives. Yeah. It looks at and lets you, it allows you to look inside yourself and see what the spirit of intent is in you. Amen. And why you're doing what you're doing, why you're saying what you're saying. Thank you, Father. The word of God is a mirror yes. to us all. 
and it allows us to self-examine ourselves yes. and see are we measuring up. Yes. And make no mistake about it, family, the standard is Jesus. Yes. The standard is Jesus. We don't lower the standard, but we rise to the standard. Yes. But see, some of us want to lower the standard so we can feel so good about ourselves. No matter what you do, you're not worthy. Amen. Not even the top of shoelaces on his books. Right. His sandals. We are all but filthy rags. Amen. Hallelujah. We're not worthy. But that doesn't mean we give up. Amen? Amen. We keep aiming. We keep shooting. We keep shooting and aiming. Mm. It is desirable, his word. We crave it, thirst for it. We long for the pure milk of the word of God. As it teaches us what to do and what not to do. But we have to implant our mind, soul, body, and spirit in his word. So it can guide us. It's not a cup holder. It's not something you throw in your coffee table just for, you know. Yeah. It is the word of the living God. And it transforms lives. Because it transforms ours. That's why we're here. Because God sent someone to us. Right? To speak a word about him. To draw us closer to him that we may be saved. Oh, then we begin to think about word yeah, yeah, yeah. and see how we can walk that thing out yeah. and get closer to him. It is an instruction for living, y'all. Yeah, yes, it is. Yeah. And it helps us keep biblical morality right there in front of us. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you, without it, I'll be lost. Yeah. Thank you, yes, with what's going on in our culture, our society, we need something to keep us in the middle of the road. Yes. Because the Bible is truth. It is. The only truth. Amen. The only truth. That's right. It is the truth that everything else is measured by. Yes. That is the standard. No matter what society tries to tell us and what you know, we, we think we we <laughs> We don't know nothing. <laughs> but God knows it all. Yes. The end from the beginning. Yes. And we learn more about him through seeking him in his word. Yes. Because if you believe it or not, this is how he reveals himself to his people. This is how he tells us about him is in his word. Yes. Did you not think the Bible was about God? <laughs> he is the headline. Come on. His name is on the marquee. Now. He's the star. He's the main character. That's right. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. Remember this. An indirect object receives from an indirect object. An indirect object receives from an indirect object. But when you do the work and labor in the word yourself, now you're receiving it directly from the subject. Amen. Which is the source. Yes, Are you hearing? Yes. Yes, sir. Receive it for yourself. Yes. Don't just take what I say on Sunday. Yes. Monday through Saturday, crack open your Bible and look for yourself. Amen. And let God speak to you where you're at. This is important because we're all in different places on this road of sanctification. That's right. Yeah. And the answer of what you're going through. <laughs> It's in the Word. Amen. It's in the Word. Get it from God for yourself. And when you get it, keep it. Hide it. The scripture tells us, I have hidden, my, hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Do not be ashamed to read God's Word. Pick it up, open it up, soak it up, and give it away. There you go. Amen. How we, how one, how we view the Bible determines what, what we believe about it. Mm -hmm. Do we think it's just an old history book? 
Because that is the view of some out there. How we view it determines on how we believe. Yes. If a person doesn't believe it is inspired, then they may look at it as old fairy tales from the past. But if they believe that it is in the inspired word of God, revelation himself by himself to man, then it's not an old wives' tale. Right. That's right. It's absolute truth. Yes. And it is. You hear every church in the world, most likely, talking about studying the Bible. It's important. It is important. Because I believe the number one way that we grow is through reading our word. Amen. That's true. And taking what we've learned and being able to apply it to our life. To read it with no application, you're just wasting your time. Amen. Thank you. We don't read for knowledge, we read for understanding. Amen. And how it can make us better. There you go. Because our goal is to be better and transformed. Amen. To be more like Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Lord. To be more like Christ. And the Bible helps us do that. The number one way that God communicates to me and probably to you is through scripture. Right. Absolutely. That's the number one way. You be reading something that thing goes on like a blink of light. Highlighted in yellow for you. Because God is trying to get something in you. Get something in you. A lot of times we can get something out of us. But he's trying to get something in us. And he does that through his word. So I can't tell you how valuable the spiritual discipline. I taught a whole series on this word. On reading your word. But I can't tell you how valuable it is. How important it is to have some time designated to read your word. And I know that our schedules are different for everybody, but it's kind of like prayer, y'all. It's the thing that we need the most, but we do the less. Some of us go home and we throw our Bible on our counters and we don't touch them up and pick them up again the next Sunday. Right? We spend hours looking at YouTube and all this other kind of stuff. When is the last time you went to your Bible app? Mm -hmm. Probably needs an update. It's, it's the truth anyhow. Amen. It's important, y'all. Like prayer. This is one of those spiritual disciplines that we cannot not do. Right? Right? Amen. Like prayer, we cannot not do that. Amen. If we say we're followers of Christ. Amen. When you believe that it's the absolute truth, so you strive to handle it differently then. You strive to handle it differently. You do your best to make proper division of scripture. Yes. You hold straight the course when presenting God's truth or sharing the gospel. You don't deviate from it. Amen. To suit your own person, no needs, or somebody else's agenda. It is what it is. God said it, that settles it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We must handle God's truth as he intended it, honestly, straightforwardly, and fully. We must plow straight and explore it and expound it on scripture. Amen. If you never crack it, how do you want to know falsehood when you hear it? That's right. That's good. Come on, man. The word of God, y'all, is food it is. for life, it is. for everyday living. And we need to partake of it each and every time we can. Don't mishandle it. Don't treat it like it's just another novel on the shelf. It's the holy word of God. Amen. Don't add to it or take away from it. Insert human opinion and ideas to it. Amen. It will do what it needs to do all by itself. Yes. Just like God, he will do what he needs to do all by himself. Yes. He doesn't need my help, your help, or anybody else's. He'll do it by himself. Right. Now, he loves to use people, but he doesn't have to. Right. 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 Come on, somebody. This is the same God that saw a rape in the feet of Elijah. Yeah. Come on. That made the walls of Jericho come down. That departed the Red Sea. He doesn't need your help. Be out of privilege when he chooses to use you. Yes. Yes. Amen. Because he doesn't have to. Right. 
So if he's giving you the honor and the privilege to serve him in the capacity of even just sharing his story, Amen. consider it a privilege. Amen. That you got to be on Team Jesus. Amen. And you see what he's doing. And he allows you to get in and help yes. what he's doing. Yes. Through his spirit. And his spirit is alive and well in his word. Amen. Yes. And we need to consume it every time we get a chance. Yes. Whether you're waiting at a doctor's appointment or with your word. See, so many people say, well, I just don't. There's always time. Amen. Because what I've learned is this. You make time for things that's important to you. Amen. We make time for things that's important to us. That's our number one thing. We're busy. We're busy. And we're all busy, so to speak. Sometimes we're just busy just to be busy. But there's always time for the Word of God. Open it up, crack it up, soak it up. So you can give it away to somebody else. Because we're supposed to be Niles and not reservoirs. Yes. We don't supposed to just hold it in. We intake so we can give it away. So someone else may be drawn to him. It is the word that draws. And if you want to go deeper in Christ, go deeper in your word. Are you hearing me today? Yes. We're commanded to study the word of God. Now, I know this is not one of those fascinating topics, but it is what it is. We are to study to learn of God and his will. We are to study God's word, not to prove position, but to see actually what it says. Absolutely. And then how we can apply it to our lives. Because that's how transformation continues to take place. Amen. It starts with salvation, but it continues through the word. That's right. Because the more you read, the deeper you go, the closer you get. Amen. The closer you get to becoming more like Christ. Amen. You start to sin a little less. You start to walk a little different. You start to yeah. think a little different. The yeah. things that used to be important to you are not important no more. You start right. setting your mind on holy things and righteous yeah. things and yeah. loving things yeah. and yeah. caring for folk that you used to care two pennies about. Come, Come on, on, somebody. Yeah. 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 Because the word allows you to see yourself. Yeah. And guess what? In all your nakedness. Yeah. And who you really are. Yeah. The word allows us to do that, y'all. Yeah. Sure to examine ourselves. There's not a day that I pick up the word that I'm not convicted about something yeah. that impacts me to change right. yeah. something in my life. Yeah. Maybe it's the way that I speak. Maybe it's the way that we love. Right. Maybe it's the passion that we have. Yes. What is the thing that drives us? It needs to be Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes. And if, we're, and if our goal is to be transformed like Jesus, <laughs> then we need to get under his cover. His covering is the word. Because we already established that this is how he reveals himself to us. It's through the word. So we want to know more about him. We've got to get into this. For ourselves. For ourselves. You can listen to all the CDs you want to, watch all the TV and channels you want to, listen to Pastor Vance on Sunday and your favorite pastors Monday through Sunday. But at some point, you got to get in this thing for yourself. Because this is where your hope is at. This is where your strength is at. So when someone asks you, brother, why do you believe this about Jesus? Why do you put so much hope in the Bible? Why do you put so much hope in your faith? You need to answer those questions. In a way that you get it, come on, mm -hmm. and that you can communicate it to somebody else. Because yeah. yeah. the way that I communicate and the way that you communicate may be different. Right. Yeah. But it's for our circle of influence that we're in. Because one thing I know about God, He takes us out, He builds us up, and He puts us right back. <laughs> right back into the environment that we're in so we can reach the people that He's called us to reach. The discipline of Bible study is imperative for a believer. It is. It's epic. Just like prayer, just like worship. It's the thing that we need the most, and one of those things we do the last. 
because we're busy. Make time for God, y'all. And I'm saying this as sincerely as I can. Make time for God because it's important if we want to grow. Amen. 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 I hope y'all received this today. We did. We did. Oh, definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here.